The last couple of years, it has been an explosion in the field of gene editing. By gene editing, meaning how we can modify pieces of DNA of our genome. Gene editing allows us, scientists in the laboratory, to modify our DNA. There are many mutations that correlate with diseases. And in the last few years, laboratories throughout the world have developed new technologies to try to modify our DNA. Targeted genome editing has been revolutionizing biomedical research. Despite the rapid progress in the past few years, however, targeted insertion of a DNA sequence in the specified genome locus has been inefficient, and this is especially true for the non-dividing cells such as the neurons or uh, cardiomyocytes or muscles. The key of this research is that we are able to modify gene in non-dividing cells. So this is important because uh, in the adult organism, um, majority of the cells are non-dividing and currently there is no technology that can insert the DNA sequences in these cells. We have recently developed a very exciting technology, we call it homology independent targeted insertion, or in short as HITI. This technology allows to modify the genome of post mitotic cells. That means cells that are present mainly in adult tissues. However, it's really difficult to get a modification in a post mitotic cell. In adult tissues, it's really complicated. And it's most complicated when you try to do this in vivo. However, when the cells are mature and they stop the proliferation processes, they cannot incorporate those sequences new from external sources. This animal model is the first trial to prove the concept that technique works. The disease we have focused is a disease that correlates with blindness. The animals are not able to see because they have a particular mutation in their genome. One of the most important applications of the HITI technology is that we can directly modify a neurons in adult brain. This is important because uh, we can specifically target a certain cell type uh, which other technologies has been incapable of doing up until now. We are very optimistic that this technology can open doors for many newer, uh, broader applications to, to either basic or translational research. The next step will be to study how this technology can be translated to the clinic. And there are two major components for that. To make sure that this technology is safe and can be translated to the patient. And the second one is efficiency. You want to fix all the cells that have the mutation. In some cases, it will be enough to fix just a few cells. In others, you will need to fix many of the cells.